The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. We're being example oxidation number, provide the oxidation numbers for the following. Beginning here with a, our sodium cation here. We see that the oxidation number for that is going to be plus one, and that's due to rule A. And if we recall, rule A states monatomic ions have an oxidation number that is equivalent to their charge. Thus, since monatomic ions have an oxidation number that's equivalent to their charge, the same applies for our chlorine here as well. The charge, the oxidation number is going to be negative one, and it's rule A that applies. Next, looking at oxygen here, the oxidation number is going to be zero, and that's because of rule B. And if you recall, rule B states all elements that are pure have an oxidation number of zero. Thus, our nitrogen will also have an oxidation number of zero because of the same rule. Now, looking at water, Right, the hydrogen is going to have an oxidation number of one, and oxygen is going to have an oxidation number of two, and that's because of rule C and D. And if you recall, rule C says hydrogen's oxidation number is one when bonded to a non-metal, and oxygen's oxidation number is negative two. Great. Now, getting back to our slide, next we have here sodium hydride, and we know the oxidation number for sodium is plus one. However, this time the oxidation number for hydrogen is negative one, and that again is because of rule C. And if we go back, we see that it says uh, right here that hydrogen's oxidation number can be negative one when bonded to a metal. Thus, that is why our oxidation number here is negative one. Now looking here next at di chlorine monoxide, the oxidation number for our chlorine is actually plus one, and the oxidation number of our oxygen is negative two, and that's because of rule E. Now going back, rule E tells us, rule E tells us that the halogens typically have an oxidation number of negative one, that's not the case for us here. The notable exception is when chlorine, bromine, or iodine are bonded to oxygen. Thus, our chlorine has an oxidation number of plus one. Wonderful. Now let's move on to our next slide, and we'll, we'll focus a little bit more on polyatomic ions. Great. Looking here, example finding uh, oxidation number for polyatomic ions. What is the oxidation number of carbon and bicarbonate? Now, if I would just like to take a moment now, go back and rule, read rule F for us again, because we're going to be applying this. The net charge on polyatomic ions is equivalent to the sum of the oxidation numbers of the elements that make up the polyatomic ion. Thus, here we know that for our bicarbonate, right, the sum of the oxidation numbers is going to be negative one, is going to be negative one. We know the oxidation number for hydrogen, that's plus one, right? Carbon is what we're after. Furthermore, we know the oxidation number for oxygen is, is two, is negative two, but we have to account for the three oxygens that we have, right? and that is all equal to negative one. Now, if we isolate here for our carbon, we find that the value is just going to be negative one, negative one, plus six, and that is going to be equal to plus four. That there is our, the oxidation number for carbon. And you can just use that strategy and really, and isolate for the atom of interest. Great, let's now continue to our next slide. Beginning here with, beginning here with our, what are we being asked? Provide the oxidation numbers for the following.